Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's podcast, we, we found a woman after, like, just warms the cockles of our own geeky, automating, marketing hearts. But before we talk to our guests, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, Six Sigma. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from landmodo.com and look scotttodd.net but if you're not automating your craigslist and your facebook postings postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek and if you're not posting your properties on landmodo.com i don't know what's going on scott todd how are you that's a workout mark i just gave you like a mental workout with all the stuff that you had to like like in for my intro that's that's hard Look, I, I, I love it. I, I also want to just remind all the listeners, today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io, another way to automate getting paid. So our guest is going is like, to have to check that out as well. Are you, are you ready to talk to our guest? Yeah, I absolutely. am. I, I, oh, I, I thought you were more. asking me. I'm like, I'm jumping in. You're ju you can jump in. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's let Dawn Mars jump in <laughs> at marsmarketing.com. If you don't know who Dawn is, she is a, let's just say she's like an automation you know, master for marketing. So she helps you automate so you earn more while working less. She's like the Ari Mizell of marketing, right? Is that a good, is that a good term? Sure. Yeah. Oh. What, whatever, whatever works for you guys. I love the, uh, the, what did you say? Warms the, the cockles of our marketing hearts. <laughs> our, yeah. Our yeah. Geeky hearts. I love that. So, I mean, Dawn, like what's, what is your, your sort of marketing automation philosophy? Because I was just reading a post about the 10 things every entrepreneur should be automating. And it really was, was great. And uh, one of the things that, that struck me was that I'm not doing is automating the, uh, the cart abandonment series when people go mm. to check out and then they don't check out. And yeah. uh, I don't think I've got that automated. That's kind of a big one. That's a, a big one. You can recover up to, what do they say? Like up to 30% of lost sales. I don't have my, uh, I don't have my stats right in front of me, but I think it's about 30% of lost sales that you can recover. So yeah, it's a, it's a good one. My philosophy when it comes to automation really is to automate everything that you can. Um, if there's something that you find yourself doing repetitively in your business, there's a good chance that you, you could automate that in some way, shape or form, right? Like the, uh, the card abandoned series that we use is like, um, if people are coming to your website with the intention to buy and, and then you're not kind of um, prompting them, you're really, you're missing out, right? Um, if you, uh, what's something else that would be like a daily task? Um, I think about like just following up with uh, a client after a podcast, right? Or uh, after um, if you have a guest on your podcast and you don't have an automated follow-up, then probably something to implement. Right. No, I do have that. Yeah, I, I kind of figured you would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will but, see. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, so let's go, you know, back in time and kind of how this, how you got started on all this and how you started your own marketing business and how the automation piece of it sort of made you different than everyone else. Hmm. Well, you know what? I, I really didn't mean to get into this industry. I started off um, in network marketing which is interesting because I listened to your last guest, Dana, and she, she was talking about having done either a direct selling or a network marketing opportunity. And I think um, a lot of entrepreneurs that I know start that way. And what was happening is that when my business really started to take off, I was doing handwritten notes for everyone who purchased from me and it got to be really tedious. And I thought, okay, well, there are a couple of ways I can do this. I can either hire somebody else to do these handwritten notes for me, or I can find a solution to automate. And uh, there happened to be a company called Send Out Cards, which is another network marketing thing. And a, a lot of people use it, especially in real estate and real estate agents love it. Um, but I was able to automate that process um, using Send Out Cards. And so uh, it made me look like a rock star, but it didn't take up my time anymore. And that's when I kind of, that was the first time I got really like, oh, this is kind of cool. I, what else can I automate to save myself time? And uh, the rest they say is history. All right. So Scott Todd has a litmus test for what he, you know, chooses to automate or delegate or eliminate. So Scott, do you want to share with Don what your litmus test is? Oh, you're, you're on mute. That's so weird. This microphone just goes right off the mute sometimes. So basically what I do 
is like, I know it's time to automate something or to delegate something when I can't stand to do it anymore. Like if I'm like, (laughs) if I do this one more time, I am going to like completely wig out, freak out and like quit my business and go get a day job. (laughs) That's not going to happen. But like, that's the, that's like it. Like, that's how I know it's time. Like it's time to give this thing away. But uh, you know, how do you do it? Like, how do you know what to automate next? Because I think a lot of people, they struggle with like automation or delegation because, you know, like they look at it and they're like, man, there's just so much to do. How do you do it? Like, how do you, how do you start and build your pieces out? Well, I think now it's kind of second nature to me. If I see, if I even think for a second that something I do is going to be done on more than one occasion, I'll just build the system to handle it. Um, But, you know, just like what you said, if you're doing something repetitively, like let's say that you're doing something that takes 15 minutes twice a week. If you can save yourself 30 minutes a week, you got to think about that over the course of an entire year, 30 minutes times 52. You guys will have to do the math for me because (laughs) I'm not going to do it on air, but it's a lot of time, right? And it's these little things, um, these, it's kind of like, um, you guys read, read the slight edge or you know the slight edge principle where it's just these little these little changes over time that make the biggest difference and like if you can be automating a 15 minute task this week and then next week you automate something else that saves you 15 minutes a day and next week you automate something else that saves you 15 minutes a day you can really compress your work week and and i think as entrepreneurs none of us uh, had this vision or dream that we would be working 60 to 80 hours a week which is what essentially happens Um, so if we can like kind of pull back a little bit on that, it's just like a very, uh, a very freeing thing to get that time back. So one of the, one of the things, I'm sorry, Mark, one of the things that I, I like started doing and I'm like, and it's funny that you mentioned, like it just becomes second nature to you is I really got on this kick. Like, um, I only want, like if I didn't, okay. So if somebody's email came in and I, I didn't open it, you know, like the tendency is like just to hit it and then like, rep, like delete or just archive it or whatever. And you know, you're like, okay, that's not a big deal. Or I could unsubscribe, but I don't want to unsubscribe because I might go back to it. I'm like, you know what? I never, ever, ever open this person's emails. So what am I doing? So then I started creating filters around everything. Right. So then mm-hmm. when something's in my email box and I'm on my phone, I'm like, Oh, delete. No, no, no. I don't want to delete it yet because I want to go home and create a filter so that I don't have to do it again, right? So then you start to get on this kick and like you're saying, like everything, it it builds a snowball because then you're like automate, filter, get rid of it. I don't want to see it. It's amazing Mm -hmm. what these little steps can do for you. Yeah, you start to see it in everything. You know, a perfect example of something that I, I wasn't automating is that like I do some affiliate marketing and I have a giveaway. Like if somebody buys a certain product from me, I give a bonus. And so what I was having to do at first was somebody would email me and then I would email them back with the, you know, with their uh, login information to get this bonus, which was an online course. Um, and I was like, you know, this doesn't even make sense. So what I did is I set it up so that now that when somebody contacts me and says, I purchased this product, then I check a little box in my, in my CRM and that automatically creates their membership account and then sends them the email that says, congratulations on buying this product. I'm so excited. I know you're going to love it. And here's your bonus instead of writing that email every time. And so maybe it's only saving me what, five, 10 minutes. But if you're selling a lot of affiliate products, that five or 10 minutes per person is a massive time saver. And it's, it's just one of those things where until you start really thinking about um, where you can, where you can kind of compress time and where you can automate your life. uh, Those are things that are just going to weigh you down or you're going to be paying someone else to do it, which is cool. Like creating jobs is great. I've got a great assistant and uh, I'm sure you guys do too. Um, But some stuff is better left to technology. So so Dawn, like I remember when I first started, right. And um, I was so busy working in the business, learning the business, you know, doing, 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 I never, was able, or at least I felt like I was never able to step back and look at what I was doing and even was uh, take enough time to even be intentional about, okay, here's something I can automate. Here's a process I can make. Here's a system I can make. I mean, it took me years to do this. So what's your recommendation for somebody that is just sort of overwhelmed, you know, in the learning curve of it and, and just doing it, doing it, doing it. Like, how do they, how do they step back and start looking at it with this eye of what can I, you know, automate? 
That is an excellent question. And I would say, particularly if you're in that overwhelm phase where your business is really starting to snowball and, you, and you're like, you know, grasping for, wait, how can I make this easier on myself? I would say go into retreat. And um, I know that when you're overwhelmed, that seems crazy. But if you can just retreat for two or three days where you're like, okay, this is business planning. I'm going into business planning mode. Um, maybe talk to somebody who does automation or who does, um, you know, process mapping. I think that that's a really important thing is to have your systems mapped out. Um, or bring on your team. Like if you've got people, if you've got a, a really good assistant or if you've got people around you who you can kind of get into a mastermind with and really take a, a solid look at what, what could be systemized in your business, uh, I would totally recommend it like two or three days because you, you really, it's the type of thing where if you give it attention, um, it, it'll pay off. It's kind of like that. I'm going to mess this up. It's like the, there's four quadrants. There's um, where there's important, but not urgent. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'll mess yeah. it up. If I no, no, there, yeah, there's mess per, it up. yeah, it's got, you know, this, like this is a uh, Rory Vaden. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's the important, the urgent, the urgent, but not important. Purpose, basically. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so everybody's working on urgent, urgent, urgent. They never get to the important. Yeah. So this is a task that I would say is extremely important, but not urgent. And that's why it tends to get pushed off. I know for years and years in my business, I pushed off knowing that I needed to have a really good um, nurturing sequence for my leads. And, and I recommend to people that they have at least 45 days follow up to start off with and up to six months because like people aren't making a buying decision until month three to six sometimes. And I knew this, I knew the statistics, but my own business, right? The cobbler's kid has no shoes, that whole thing. Uh, yeah. So it took me a long time because it was important, but it wasn't urgent. I was too busy um, serving clients and, and building systems for other people and building courses and that kind of thing. So I put it off. And then finally I was like, you know what, this, um, this requires attention. This requires retreat. Um, I'm part of a mastermind. So we took off, we went to Arizona actually, um, mapped out an entire year of systems and then implement it. And so like the best thing you can do to take yourself out of overwhelm, I personally believe is getting a really solid plan and then executing it, either executing it yourself or hiring somebody to execute it for you. Okay. So what do you do if you have a, like a, a friend like Scott Todd that, you know, gives you a shiny object every day. Right. <laughs> so like I'll talk to Scott and like, next thing you know, I'm chasing Hazel, right? Like, mm. and, and, I'm, and you know, my, my first, instinct is uh oh like now i've got you know fomo i got this fear of missing out and and scott's you know desktop is pristine and i'm a complete chaotic mess <laughs> but then next thing you know like i'm working on that shiny object as opposed to the important things in my business so scott i mean you you've shiny object syndrome for first first for, for the record, you're not chasing, Hazel is an app. You're not out chasing some woman named Hazel. Okay. Like that's, yeah, just, that's yeah, I want very to good. clear the yeah. record, right? It's an app that uh, helps right. you clean up your desk. Right. Yeah. But, if my, if my yeah. wife is listening. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hazel, I'm covering. See how I got your back, Mark? I always Thank have your you. back. Okay. So <laughs> I think that, uh, Mark, I, I mean, like I'm always like playing with like new apps, right? Like even my tip of the week today is one that I'm playing with because I, I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to settle and I don't want I don't want to discount something because, you know, well, the way I did it back in the day, I, I do want to keep like learning and leaning into things because I think that that's the only way that you can kind of stay in tune. Um, but look, you know, like I always say, even in, in flight school or any coaching mark, like I always say, like, don't let technology stand in your way, right? Like if you can't figure out the technology or if the technology becomes kind of a burden to you or it gets in your way, put it to the side and come back to it after like, there's no rush to technology. You know, I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make is they're like, Oh, I got to learn Hazel and I got to learn accounting through the accounting system. And I got to learn this. And like, you don't have to learn anything. I mean, like paper and pencil is still very adequate to do any job that you need. But if you say that just, Dawn's head's going to explode. No, it's not because she doesn't want technology to stand in someone's way either. I know she doesn't. I don't. Dawn, but, I do, but I do, but I do. No, I, no, I really don't. No, I, I, tend to agree. Um, I, th I think all of us, especially with the internet, we've all got entrepreneurial ADD to some extent, right? Like the shiny object thing. I don't know anybody who's immune to that. 
I mean, you have to be a special type of person. Um, it's kind of like knowing when to put your toys away, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Like I'll sometimes go off on a tangent for a week. Like, like it'll be a full week where I'm just like, Oh, I'm like diving into something new. There's a new app or something. Like I recently, somebody introduced me to the Robin hood investing app and I like, I'm not an investor. I'm very risk averse. And, uh, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And I dove into it and I got into some high volatility stocks <laughs> and I was like down a complete rabbit hole for a minute. And then I was like, what am I doing? Stop it. And I stopped. I just, I just got out of it. Um, none, none of us are immune. None of us are immune to that stuff. Well, I mean, Don, Mark, do you have like a, a, like a rule that, that says, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to try it. Like, like I know on your website, like you're a big entreport fan. Versus say maybe lead pages or click funnels or, you know, some other uh, a type of, of automation uh, mm -hmm. app, right? Yep. So do you have some type of like rule that says I will work on this for X amount of time before I say, okay, I'm going to jump ship and go into something that suits me better? Um, I don't, I wouldn't say that I have a rule, but I do use the Pomodoro method, like with a countdown timer that kind of like, I have a constant countdown timer going and I have a list of things. Like I've got this really cute, <laughs> like it's a very girly planner, not on purpose. It's the only one that had this layout. Um, but it's like an open face. It doesn't, it's not a book. It's a flip planner. And so it's always open in front of me. So if I get off task and I can feel myself going down like the Facebook rabbit hole, for example, I can look down at my planner and I've also got like every 25 minutes, I have an alarm going off that says, Hey, wake up. <laughs> like, have you been doing your work? Is it time for a break? And so that has really helped, but I still, I'm not immune. I still end up on tangents. Every, we all do. Uh, it's just a matter of being able to kind of like rein yourself in. All right. What's, what's like the worst advice you see or hear? given in, you know, the marketing automation world? Worst advice. I think, uh, I don't know if you guys would agree with this, but I see sometimes when, when people are getting started, the recommendation is to use like cheap or free automation tools. And, and people really gravitate towards that because a lot of entrepreneurs are starting out and they're on a shoestring budget and there's nothing wrong with that. There are lots of low cost options that are awesome. But um, you look at some of the free options and they're like, oh, sweet, I can, uh, I can send email with this. Yeah, you can send email, but it's not an autoresponder. It's not going to actually do the job for you. You're going to have to log in and do that yourself. Like if the tools that you're not paying for aren't doing you any good, if they're not saving you time, they're not making you money, then they're not good for your business. And I see that, that advice like, oh, get this free, this free autoresponder. No, don't don't get the free autoresponder because it doesn't have the functionality you need. You're going to have to pay a little bit of money. No matter where you, you are, you have to come up with a little bit of budget. And uh, I, think, I think people who perpetuate that idea that you can do everything for free really do um, a disservice because I, I just don't think you can get the same results. Scott Todd, what's, what's, what do you see in the, uh, the automation game right now that, that, that makes you crazy? Um, I think, I think the fact that, uh, people don't like, they don't sit down and plan ahead, right? Like they don't sit down and try to solve a problem with it. Like they, they kind of get that shiny object syndrome, right? Like it, it's easy to look at all of these ways to automate things, but at the end of the day, you have to have an understanding of what problem you're trying to achieve. Okay. Like what problem are you trying to solve? Because only then can you ap apply the, uh, the appropriate strategy or the tool. So I think that what happens is like Hazel, for example, you know, we'll go back and pick on Hazel. I love Hazel, but it was because I had a pain point. I had, I had an issue that I was trying to solve, which was the fact that I hated all these files always on my desktop and there was no way of cleaning it. Or I might go and I might, you know, put something in the trash bin and then the trash bin fills up and then I have no room. And so I, I was like, uh, okay, this is ridiculous. There has to be a way. The downloads folder, that's my biggest pet peeve too, is my, like my downloads folder. I download all this stuff. And I never go back and, and use it. And then it just sits there. And I basically said, hey, Hazel, if I haven't touched this folder in 30 days or file in 30 days, just chuck it, throw it in the garbage. I don't need it. And then every, every seven days, if I haven't moved something out of the trash in seven days, it's gone. Like I don't need it. So if you're not having a defined purpose for trying to solve a problem, you know, applying all these tools or looking at all these tools is not going to 
solve you solve anything for you. It's going to waste your time. And I think that's what a lot of people try to do. And then they, then they get frustrated and they're like, I don't understand it. Well, you don't understand it because you're not entering it, in my opinion, with a defined, you know, problem that you're trying to solve. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I totally get it. So, so Don, can you, uh, like if you go back, right. And if you could say, okay, I, I started my business in 2010, what, what advice would you give your, your new self that was starting out, you know, back in 2010? Hmm. That is a good question. Um, I think probably to have a little bit more patience and to not like, this is a little like woo woo, but to live in the now a little bit more. I feel like in the beginning of my business, I was really on the grind and I, you know, I was working like 12, 14 hours a day because I thought that that's what it took to be successful was to be grinding all the time. And I think that it was really at the detriment of other parts of my life, like my health uh, suffered, my relationships suffered. And so if I could give myself some advice, it would be like, you know, shut down at eight o'clock, hang out with your family, <laughs> go, go for a walk with your dog, do those things. Because um, now is, is just as important as that idea of success that you have that's a year or two years down the road. Yeah, it, it's so true, isn't it? Where we just you know, we want it now, now, now. And, you know, I, I love that Tony, what's that Tony Robbins quote, Scott? The, the success leaves clues. No, I think it's, I think you, oh, un, oh, you, I know. you yeah, overestimate you, what you can do in a year, but yeah, you underestimate under. what you can do in five years. Yeah. Or your lifetime, your lifetime. Or your lifetime or something like that. Oh, so. I haven't heard that one. That's a good one. See, yeah, Don, aren't you glad you're on the Art of Passive Income podcast now? Yeah, I, I was already glad about that. Uh, <laughs> I was already happy. <laughs> So, so what one thing would you most like to change about your own business or improve on in your, in your own business right now? Um, hmm. Well, you know, it's, um, it's always a work in progress. I, wouldn't you guys agree? It's never like, you're never done. There's always something to work on. Do you guys no, feel I, like I, that? I feel, yeah, I feel like that. Like, I feel like that with like my life, like it never gets easier. Like I woke up this morning, I'm like, my workout never gets easier. Like the business, it just like, it just more problems just get created. Like Scott and I are, are always joking. We're like new problems, hopefully better yeah. problems, but they're just all like, they never end. No, they never, I think they never end. And I think as much as uh, the things that I was really excited to do was to really get serious about automating my own business and having a really long, beautiful follow-up process that really walked people through a journey and that I was really segmenting my list on purpose and all that stuff. And so that's a constant work in progress. I'm always finding new ways to do that. Um, I think right now, one of the things that I'm uh, trying to be better at is uh, like actually spending the time to, to sit down, like what I was talking about earlier, like go into retreat with my own business, map it out and then, and then implement. And also letting go of some of the implementation because I've got some really fabulous people on my team now who are like they are just as good, if not better than I am at, at Entreport and with marketing tools. Um, so sometimes it's like just being able to let go of some of those things. Like I'm, I don't have to do it all myself. That's, that's like a personal development thing though. I think more so than improving my business. No, I mean, absolutely. Scott, how, how difficult did, was it for you to let go at certain parts of your business? Um, no, I, I, again, because I, I think like, you know, um, I'm always letting go of the stuff that I don't like, uh, or I don't like anymore, or I don't want to do anymore. It, it becomes a lot easier when you do that, as opposed to letting go of the stuff that is really core to you. You know, Mark, on, on this podcast, I've talked about the guy that does the, the car dealership and he's, you know, he, he always ends the ads with like, it's huge. He's the Kia dealership, the largest Kia dealership in North America, I think. And, you know, here he is, he's on these ads and he's, he's doing the advertising. And I was reading about it. He flies, he's based in New York, but he flies into Florida like once a, uh, once a month to do his ads. So he's here and he records like all his ads uh, over the course of a, day, of a few days. They're recording like 30, 40 different ads. He fly, he, he does, he visits his locations and he flies back out and then they play the ads the whole month long. So, you know, I think like, okay, 
what is his, what is, what is it that he's really good at? Or what is it that he really enjoys about his business? It obviously is the, the ads, the creating the ads. Otherwise he wouldn't do it. Right. So I'm sure if someone went to him and said, Hey, you got to stop doing these ads, that'd be really hard for him to give up. But it, because it's, it's core to him, it's, it's in that, that core circle as opposed to, you know, like maybe he doesn't like the accounting. He doesn't even talk about the accounting other than looking at the financial statements. That's going to be stuff that's like, man, I'm so glad I hire an accountant to go do that for me. So if you just keep the stuff that's core to you that you're enjoying and get rid of the stuff that's not, I think, it, I think it's an easy progress. Don, is there anything we shouldn't be automating? Mm, yeah, I think, I think you, can, you can automate relationships to a certain extent, but I think that there's no substitute for actually getting on the phone with people or you know if you're local to your clients or your audience then to get in front of them I, I think there's no substitute for that and stuff like this like when you guys asked me to do the podcast and come on video with you I feel like there's no substitute for that face-to-face -face connection it's so much better than than being on the phone I get you to like I get to see you go for your morning walk for example Right, right. <laughs> that's that's fun and, and it's just nice to be face to face with people and so I, w I would never automate that bit I still get on the phone with all my clients okay that's that's great advice I, I think sometimes I get so caught up in maximizing my time that I'll lose sight of that that you know ultimately it's about the relationship and and that just doesn't scale I can't automate that Right now, what I can automate is like my calendar, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, I use Acuity. I'm actually going to go do a book like a boss. Is there a calendar app you like better than another? I love Acuity. I love it. You do? Okay. Yeah. Check out book like a boss. I think it's might be, uh, might uh -oh. be competing. Uh -oh. <laughs> Shiny we're objects. Get, <laughs> we're getting geeky. We're getting geeky. <laughs> I can do that. I can go there with you. All right. Uh, yeah. So let, let's get geeky now. Scott, you ready to get geeky? I am. Let's go. All right. I mean, we don't do this normally with, with all our guests, but since it's, you know, Don is the, like the marketing wizard, right? I, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm almost afraid to even start going down this road. Uh, I'm, a, I'm the geekiest of the geeky. You can do this. And I like, yeah, as but I'm as... afraid it's going to ruin my whole week. Like I'm just going to be going down all these rabbit <laughs> holes. No. Maybe. And as long as it's not so geeky that it's not like you're not able to visualize it on a podcast. Cause like, you know, sometimes you listen to a podcast and you really need to be sitting down in front of you. Like you'd need a screen share right, to, to right. visualize that. Let's not do that, but I'm totally happy to talk tech. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're at that point now. We're going to ask you for your tip of the week. I'm going to ask you for your five favorite marketing automation tips as of this recording. Oh, Go. my gosh. You are totally Go. putting me on the spot here. Marketing automation tips. Uh, first of all, I absolutely adore Entreport. If your business is uh, sort of in a growth phase, I think that it is absolutely bar none the best software there is. Better there. than Infusionsoft. We've had some Infusionsoft guys on. I think Infusionsoft is great, but I think that if you are a person who enjoys being inside of your own system and being able to manage it yourself and you don't find yourself to be particularly geeky and you don't love technology, then you will much prefer Entreport. It's a much easier um, user interface. I okay. will say that for it. Okay. Four, four more. Four more. Um, I think one of the top, my, my number one tip would be to get a 45 day follow up series in place now. Uh, a lot of people buy an autoresponder or they get a, you know, a mail system and they write that first email and they're like, okay, and now what? And there's just like, that is just like terrible for your business, right? That you give something great and then you don't follow up. The fortune is totally in the follow up. And so getting a 45 day follow up in place is key. That's okay. only six emails, one email a week, six emails, you're good to go. All right, it's, not, it's, it's not that much. And you can hire someone to write them if you need to, if you hate writing. Fiverr.com. Uh, let me think now. When email marketing, this is an email marketing tip, always leave your audience on a cliffhanger. So Ooh. always leave like a PS in tomorrow's email or in next week's email. I'm going to share this juicy, amazing tip that you will step over your mother to get. Make sure you come back, right? So something that keeps them opening your emails and that can actually, um, typically email rates, open rates go down over time. You can actually keep your open rates very steady if you use that technique. 
All right, I'm going into my autoresponder right now, and I'm going to start editing. <laughs> All right, sorry. Okay, here or, sorry we go. For my my uh, ADD, but okay, I, I am still listening. No, that's Scott. Fine. Scott, are you are you off to the races now? Not yet. Not are you yet. are you I'm, doing I'm, that in your autoresponder? Uh, no, but I will. I'm going to do it right now. Um, and, I'm, and I'm actually going to take Don's words. Step over your mother for this next tip. I don't know if I would say that. I'd, uh, I probably wouldn't. I, I feel like it's a little bit <laughs> too harsh. All but right, uh, right. but you guys might be able to manage that in your own series. Next thing is the card abandon. I really believe that you can you can definitely add some cash to your bottom line by doing that. So if you've got um, people are, have that buying intent. You want to make sure that you're actually taking them to a checkout page. It's not people that see your sales page. That's annoying if you go to a sales page and start getting hammered with emails. But if you actually click the buy button and you are taken to a page where you can buy something, that's when you can start following up. And all the big companies are doing that now. Like Amazon does that. If, how many times have you gone shopping for a product at Amazon, put it in your cart, and then got an email that's like, it's still waiting for you come on yeah. back. <laughs> right. So big companies are doing it. It works. There's been a lot of market research on it. How many tips am I at now? Yeah. One more. Oh, I feel like I need to really do pull something good out here. How about a favorite book? Oh, that I can totally give you. Okay. It's the most boring book in the entire universe, but it will change your life. So, okay. uh, it's called work the system. And oh. I wish I had it in front of me. Okay. Uh, work. Do I have to get it in, in print or can I get it on Audible? Um, it, it, that's the kind of book that I think you would probably do better if you had both. I, I usually get the Audible version of the books that I buy for my Kindle. Or, or if this one is cool as a print version though. Okay. I think. So it's Work the System, The Simple Mechanics of Making More and Working Less by Sam Carpenter. Uh, really amazing. If you're, if you're thinking like, I'd love to automate my business, but I really don't know where to start and I don't really understand how that would improve my bottom line. If you're not already convinced, this book will not only convince you, it will explain how to, how to systemize and how to scale. And it's beautiful. You'll be bored. The first half is very boring. I like Sam, buddy. <laughs> uh, but, but if you can get through it, you will love it. It will change, it will change your life. No All doubt. right. All right. I'm, I just checked out. Okay. So as you were giving the tips, I just went into my autoresponder and into Amazon. How about that for uh, that's not being fast action, not being present, but that, that see, and that's what we do here. We take massive action. Right. I don't think about it. I just do it. Scott, what have you done? Scott's probably already completed his autoresponder series <laughs> <laughs> as you're talking. Well, I, I didn't complete it. Uh, I'll take my, I, I've already delegated all these tasks, Mark, to a uh, VA to, to do them for me. So, you know, Ooh. while you're doing the work, I've got somebody else doing it for me. You just dropped the mic. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I do, man. That's how I, that's how I no, that, and I, I think that's great. I actually enjoy yeah. writing. So that part I want to, I actually want to do for myself. Um, See, that's your core, right? Like that's something yeah. that you enjoy. Yeah. Um, but Don, would you make the argument, like, even though I enjoy it, I'm not growing as an entrepreneur if I'm actually writing the PS cliffhangers? I think you could argue for or against that. Like I have a lot of people who come to me or who, like who don't love writing and they just, they're like, can you please just give me some templates? And so we can, we can do that. But I'm like you, my core is, is writing. I, I like writing my own emails. And so it's really hard for me to delegate that. So if you love it, uh, like, why don't, why would you delegate the stuff that you love? I don't and know. that's where I, I know that's where I, I have a problem. Unless of course that it's like eating into your family life and your like whole life around you is falling apart. Cause you're like, no, I just want to write all the time. I think that that's like becomes a bit of an issue where you could then outsource it. And there are lots of really good copywriters out there. No, I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I just feel like um, nobody's going to care about that autoresponder series. Like there's certain core parts of the business that no one's going to care as much about it than I will. And so mm -hmm. those things, I feel like as much as I probably would want to delegate it, I think that the soul of it needs to come through. Like my geeky soul kind of needs to come through. But yeah, you're probably right. Like, you know, I don't know. I, I struggle. 
I would keep it. You know, I, I really, really feel that your writing, the power of the written word really can't be understated. You really have the opportunity to touch people and to move people and to change hearts and minds. That's, that's really at the core of writing. And so if you love writing, then don't give it up. I will say that if you don't love writing, and you're gonna hire a copywriter or you're gonna buy templates because there's lots of good copywriters and lots of great templates. Make sure that you don't just let it uh, become like an extraneous, like uh, you, you don't look at it. Because right. if you let someone else write for you and it, the voice isn't right, it's so awful. There was a, a couple of years ago, there was a big launch of the basically these email templates and a whole bunch of people started using them. And it, some of it was very harsh language and there was a particular subject line that went around and it was just like, ugh, like yucky. And every time I saw it, I was like, did you guys even read this before you sent it? Because it, there's no way on earth that if you had read through this and you like care about your audience and like them, that you would send them this email. It's awful. Um, so just like having a little bit of thought process behind it, like thinking through, does this sound like me? I, I, I think that's important. I, I, I agree. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, I've got, a, um, I've got an app for you to check out. It's gfeed.co. Oh, G, no. I'm letter scared. G, feed, dot C-O. It's pretty cool because it ties in. You download the app. You log into your Google uh, okay. Gmail. And guess what? It, it treats all your email like a feed. Like you can just scroll up take action, delete, do whatever, oh. all by scrolling as opposed to going message by message. It's like a Facebook kind of a feel. Oh, done and done. I just downloaded it. So now I need G Feed and Hazel was the other one, right? Yeah, G Feed and Hazel. Okay. Oh, I've got one for you, Don. Yeah, let's have let's have the tip of the week. Or air, is this, air, this I've got well, my tip of the week is going to be your site, but I just for you. I'm not listeners. Okay. You, you can look at this or not. Airtable.com. Airtable. Airtable. It's if in Zapier. If you're not using Zapier every day, oh, you know my second love behind uh, Encoreport. Yeah, Zapier. yeah. <laughs> See, there you go. Um, and then uh, I did find a great site. That uh, that ought, that will take your blog post and make it a video automated, and that's oh, called that's awesome. and it's free. Lumen five l u m e n five dot com, and for what we do, you know, if you got a if you got a, let's say you make a land listing, right? Well, then it'll automatically create this video that you can put on Facebook, and you know, video killed the radio star. So that's cool. That's right. actually really cool because there's some very expensive paid software that does that. So if that's free. Free. L-U-M-E-N, the number five dot com. And then my tip of the week is learn more about how you can automate so you earn more while working less. And Dawn's got a free Facebook group, which I just joined. Marsmarketing.com. M-A-R-R-S marketing.com. We'll have a link to her site. Um, you know, are you ready to save 10 to 20 hours per week? Click here to register. I'm going to register because I'm, I'm ready to save some time. Because yeah. look, <laughs> at the end of the day, we can always make more money. We can't get more time. And that's what it's all about, right? Agreed. All right. So, Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. Don Mars, are we good? So good. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I love your show. And this has been so much fun. Thank you so much. I want to thank the listeners. And look, the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like Adon Mars from MarsMarketing.com is if you do us three little favors. Super easy. It takes two minutes, but it really helps us a lot. You've got to subscribe. You've got to rate and you've got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your, your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit so you can start automating your passive income, which it's pretty geeky. All right, Scott, you want to you want to lead us out? Are we even going to do this? Oh, I think we retired it, Mark. Oh, I let's retire. All right, let All right. let's just everyone ring. All right, thanks everybody. <laughs>